So one of the messages that's come up several times is that we, the behavior of this system depends on things called boundary conditions, which is in this case the side of the tank. It's rather artificial, but it's a general scientific idea that the boundaries of a model matter. Secondly, it depends on the buoyancy of the material. And thirdly, it depends on the strength. So we've just seen that if we had nothing at the left hand end, then as we let this material come back up, it would decide to move sideways. So what we're now going to do is put some frankly very weak material there, but that could be another piece of continental plate. And the weakness is controlled by many, many different factors. So maybe that's not unrepresentative of the strength of a plate. So what we're going to do now is weigh it down again. Okay, so remember, this is, this is a place where continental crust has been subducted. And although you, you, you'll, your eye will be drawn to the right hand end, I want you to watch the left hand end now. So as I let go, can you see how the bubble wrap, you just look just here, the bubble wrap has folded right back on itself. So it's been shortened, it's been folded and shortened. And now that's what's happening in mountain belts. If you go to the Alps, you can see mountain sides with folds like that, which is where the crust has been made shorter and thicker. And from where I'm looking, you can see down on top, long fold hinges trending across there. Now the message here is, I could do that anyway, right? So this is what happens in an ordinary plate collision, that I can have this, and I move this sideways and I get a zone of folding. But I'm alluding briefly here to my own research that actually I think in the Alps, amongst other mountain belts, let's just do it one more time. What has happened is the driving force for that shortening, for that folding, isn't the large scale plate convergence. It's that process. There it is again. Oh, that was more spectacular that time, you see. So we've actually got quite a lot of shortening there. So, in summary, to repeat, these models tell us quite a lot about how buoyancy and the strengths of layers interact to control how the Earth works. And so they are powerful as learning tools and as analogies for what the Earth is actually doing. And there are many parallels between the geometries and the shapes we've seen in these demonstrations and the actual behaviour of the Earth.